Go ahead and get started with the day's news. Our top story today, authorities in Canada are investigating a deadly van crash along a busy Toronto intersection. At least 10 people were killed and 15 others were hurt when 25-year-old Alec Minasayan rammed a white rental van into pedestrians on Monday. Officials have not ruled out terrorism as a possible motive. The suspect is in police custody. And the man accused of opening fire in a Nashville Waffle House is now behind bars and faces four counts of criminal homicide. 29-year-old Travis Reinking was found in a wooded area Monday about a mile away from the restaurant. He is now being held on $2 million bond. His father could face federal charges because he was ordered to keep weapons away from his son. And former President George H.W. Bush remains hospitalized this morning with a blood infection. The 93-year-old was admitted to a Houston hospital Sunday morning just a day after his wife, Barbara Bush's funeral. The former first lady died last week at the age of 92. Closer to home, Billings police have found the 12-year-old girl who was reported missing Monday evening. An alert that Olivia Seminole was found was issued just before 10:15 last night. The girl reportedly left her mother's home. Details on where she was found were not released. On to court news, the names of three Billings officers who had sex with another employee on city property will not be released. District Judge Michael Moses issued a temporary restraining order to block the city from releasing the names. Monday's decision means the documents are sealed until a final determination is made. A hearing on the restraining order is scheduled for May 3rd. The incidents came to light during a criminal investigation of the civilian employee who admitted to stealing narcotics from the evidence building. All three officers admitted to the allegations of having sex with the civilian employee. Each officer received a punishment of suspension without pay. Continuing our coverage, authorities have identified the body found at the Yellowstone River over the weekend, but they're not releasing her name. Officials have not been able to contact the 43-year-old woman's next of kin, so her name is being withheld. Yellowstone County Sheriff Mike Linder says her cause of death is under investigation. The body was discovered Sunday afternoon near Two Moon Park. On to Crime Watch, a man is behind bars after police say he randomly stabbed a woman at a downtown grocery store. 74-year-old Donald Partridge was arrested Monday morning and booked into the Yellowstone County Jail for felony assault with a weapon. Billings Police Sergeant Harley Cagle says the man entered the store just after 6 a.m., approached the woman and said a few words, then stabbed her. Cagle said Partridge stayed inside the store following the attack and was arrested by responding officers. Partridge, who police describe as a transient apparently did not know the woman. She suffered minor injuries in the attack. Meanwhile, a recent social media firestorm has Bishop Michael Warfel of the Diocese of Great Walls Billings trying to walk a line between support for Catholic schools and the teachings of the Catholic Church. Warfel sent a letter to all parishes in Billings this weekend and spoke to Q2 News Monday in a sit-down interview. At issue is a post on Facebook by Great Walls priest Father Ryan Erlenbush. Erlenbush was raised in Billings and attended Billings Catholic schools. Just last week, he called for people to pool their support of the school's annual fundraiser Mayfair because the event's co-chairs are gay. Warfel told us he supports the mission of Catholic schools, but he too takes issue with the foundation's decision of co-chairs. There are certain guidelines that I believe that need to be followed, and when someone is uh, living in a, in a context, in this case a same-sex marriage, it is contrary to Catholic teaching. So to place them in a very, such a prominent role then brings people to question, well, are we following Catholic teaching? And Bishop, are you following Catholic teaching? Bishop Warfel confirmed he will not attend Mayfair this year, telling us it would be an awkward situation and he doesn't want to be in the midst of it. Well, one of the world's most admired and trusted journalists made a stop in Montana to help support the Billings Public Library Foundation. Judy Woodruff has covered politics since 1971 and is currently the managing editor and anchor of PBS's NewsHour. She spoke to a PAC crowd at the library on Monday. Having seen D.C. operate for years, we asked her if she thinks the country's current political gridlock is reversible. I don't see an immediate relief from today's polarization. I think not only do we have a polarized Washington, we now have a polarized electorate where many people are choosing their news sources based on their political views. Not everybody. I mean, I'm grateful to say that at the news hour, we 
play it down the middle. We are all about telling it straight. Our audience numbers have grown since the election, and I think that's because there are many Americans who want straight news. But I think in terms of our polarization in this country, I think it's embedded to a certain degree right now, and it may take the next generation to pull us out of that. Our children. Our children. Woodruff also talked about how young intelligent journalists are making their way through this current atmosphere and how important that is to uphold our democracy. Now we go to Butte where after 15 years the festival dedicated to the King of Daredevils has officially been cancelled. The three-day Evil Knievel Days Festival was cancelled this year due to a lack of funding. Planning for this year's festival from July 26th through the 28th hit a roadblock when organizers were unable to raise $200,000 needed to hold the event. Organizers claim they were unable to get local sponsorships and donations necessary to cover the costs of the festival. And just announced minutes ago, Billings get ready for Kelly Clarkson. Grammy Award winning singer will be the Saturday night headliner at Montana Fair in August. Clarkson will play the Rimrock Auto Arena on August 11th. It's been nine years since she last played in Montana. Clarkson came to fame in 2002 when she was American Idol's very first winner. Since then, she has had over 100 Billboard singles. Tickets for the individual shows at the fair go on sale April 27th at the Metro Park box office. You can also buy by phone or online at metropark.com.